start, can we go back a little bit? Can you explain your connection? And I know you've known Eve for a long time um, and why it was important for you to be involved in the work that we do. Oh, for me, it's a lovely story that goes back to um, Eve's contribution to the institution that I've been part of for nearly 40 years um, and her, her role um, as the first woman board member of the institute. Um, a, a long time, to our shame, a long time before we had our second woman board member. And we were a pretty old-fashioned institution. And what I loved about Eve was her patience. And um, <laughs> both with us as an institution, um, and you might think that's not quite the right word to describe Eve because she's a you know, force of nature and... Um, you know, always hungry for progress, but for me, she's been very generous with us as an institution and with me as a CEO for the last 15 years. And Eve both supported us and challenged us, which I think is a wonderful combination. And there's probably been three parts to um, Eve's impact. And, you know, the first was really setting a challenge around gender equity of our workforce. You know, we medical research is unlike other STEM disciplines. We've had more women come in, coming into our um, field um, than men probably since the 1970s. Wow. And yet when I took over as CEO, we had no female professors at all. Mm -hmm. So I sat in a room with 25 blokes. Was, mm -hmm. And that was 2009. And so, so the, the first issue, you know, that Eve, I think, has really pushed us to address is the, the, those core issues. How do we, how do we become an organisation that has a level of decency? How do we, in, exactly as we've talked about as a nation, if we want to solve these in, almost seemingly intractable problems in health and medical research, like dementias and brain cancer and all of the diagnoses that we dread as, a, as individuals, families and communities, we need to tap into talent. Um, so that, that was really the first issue, and we've gone a long way to doing that. We still haven't solved our, all of our challenges, but we're on a path, and there's a sense in which that's sustainable, independent of the CEO, and both a bottom-up and a top-down approach. So that was the first issue. And then Eve really set us the challenge of ensuring that the um, research that we do doesn't disenfranchise women in its application. And that's the crash test dummy yeah. anecdote. Mm -hmm. you know, and an example, we before you take a medicine from a laboratory and start testing it in patients, it has to go through animal testing. So we use mice. And there was a time where we used eight-week-old male black six mice right? because we wanted everything to be very consistent, which, of course, meant that the drugs that we were testing were never tested in female mammals. You know, things that we take for granted as scientists, but we'd never thought of from any societal practice. So there are, there are those sort of issues that we've been, with Eve's um, encouragement, have been confronting, and that's been fantastic. And then the third, the, the third element of that is to, to think of, and this is where I think the Women's Donor Network, AIW, has also come in, is... Um, we don't just receive philanthropy, um, we support events. So we support panel discussions and we support conferences and we get asked to sponsor things. And then to be able to take the lens of a donor ourselves or a supporter and then ask how can we use that power to start catalyzing change in other organisations. Um, so th that's been the journey. Um, and Eve's been an incredibly generous mentor to me. Um, and I look around the room and I can see other women who equally have been patient and um, generous with their advice and their guidance, Julie included. And so when um, Julie called and said, would you consider this? It was easy. Um, it, it's the greatest privilege to be part of a board like this, but also be working with a group that I think ambitions resonate with me as a medical researcher. So it's this acute sense of wanting to do something today to change the world, which is exactly how we feel when we interact with consumers and patients. But an understanding that you need to 
be resolute and you're running a marathon and to actually change the world is often done in incremental steps. So you need that um, longevity of vision that's matched by a longevity of support from the people who support your organisation. And Eve's given that up to us um, as part of medical research. And I know that all of you are considering giving that to Julie and the team for this amazing organisation. 